Je to tak, tak můžeš. OK, so uh, welcome everyone. Today I will be introducing you to S pipes modules and their usage. Uh, this presentation is follow up uh, on the S pipes presentation given in November by, by Miro. Uh, in case that somebody doesn't know S pipes, it is a tool to manage semantic pipelines defined in RDF, and it is inspired by uh, Sparkle Motion Language. And before we dive uh, into specific modules and how to use them, let's first define uh, what a module is. It is a building block of a pipeline that performs a specific task. And these modules are stateless transformations uh, of input data and can be used in, in pipelines. Uh, they are usually implemented in Java, but executions of modules are parameterized uh, within uh, RDF. And each module has to have a unique type URI, and uh, it consists of execution context, uh, it is important to mention that uh, S-Pipes uses Jena framework for RDF uh, data manipulation. Uh, each S-Pipes module can have uh, any number of input uh, and output constraints. Uh, it is uh, the validation constraints in Sparkle query. Currently, S-Pipes support uh, two types of queries, ask and select, and ask returns true if validation constraint is violated, and select returns uh, non-empty binding if validation constraint is violated. And uh, in the picture, we can uh, we can see that uh, it is validating that every person has first name and last name. Uh, it is the first picture on the right and that uh, each person is at least 18 years old. Uh, it is the, the down below. Uh, while S-Pipes comes with many useful modules, sometimes uh, you may need to create custom modules to fit your specific needs. Creating cust a custom module is simple uh, as it is developed uh, using Java and it is automatically generated. Uh, when we create new module, we have uh, to include information about a new module in the in other repository in Spipes modules. It is kind of uh, inconvenient, but this will be deleted uh, soon. Uh, we have also a module archetype, which is a Maven archetype uh, for generating a clean template for a new, new module. Uh, I will show this in a demo in the end. And we have the, the other Maven plugin, which is used for processing existing modules, and it takes care uh, of updating RDF ontologies. Uh, okay, the, the most used module is apply construct, which is responsible for applying Sparkle construct queries to RDF data. Uh, the module takes in one or more construct queries as an input along with the other parameters, like whether to replace existing data uh, uh, and how many iterations to run queries for, and, and so on. Uh, the output is constructed RDF graph. It is important to, to, to mention. Uh, the advantage is that you can build more constructs and combine them and connect together. Uh, we can see in the picture how apply construct is used within pipeline. Uh, you specify construct body and, and where clause. Uh, uh, next, we have a bind by select module, which runs uh, a select query and it binds all result variable variables uh, of the first matching result set. Uh, the, the input RDF is simply passed uh, to the module. For example, uh, if you run the select on the screen, uh, it will bind uh, the name and age as output variables. Uh, then we have text analysis module, which is in progress now. Uh, and it takes uh, an input RDF with literals. And this module annotates it uh, with analysis service, and the output is annotated literals pointing to the original literals. Uh, 
Then we have uh, the other one, extract term occurrences. And as the name uh, suggests, it extracts term occurrences from annotated literals of, out, of input uh, RDF. And uh, these literals are annotated by RDFA, which is RDF, but in HTML attributes. And it is annotated using uh, termit, termit, termit terminology to mark occurrences of terms and rate them with, with score. Uh, the combination of these two modules allows us to uh, annotate literals and then get the term occurrences. Uh, to deploy data to a remote repository, we can use RDF4j module, which deploys data to RDF4j server, uh, where you have to specify some parameters like uh, credentials or context I IRI. And the last one is RDF4j module, RDF to CSV module, which is uh, responsible for converting the input RDF data into CSV format. And it saves uh, to this CSV file. Uh, the table is reconstructed from column and row resources, which is defined in table schema. And this table schema is uh, necessary to, to be present uh, in the input for this module. Uh, the tabular module is a module in SPIPES that enable, uh, enables the conversion of CSV or TSV data into RDF data. Uh, the implementation loosely follows uh, the W3C recommendation and CSV is comma separated values. Uh, it is a popular data format used to store uh, tabular data in a plain text. Most people know this. Uh, uh, from from Excel. Uh, however, RDF is more flexible and powerful framework to represent the data. Uh, and okay, uh, tabular module also creates annotated table, uh, which adds uh, some additional metadata, which are columns, rows, and and schema. And the schema is definition of tabular format. Uh, that may be common for multiple tables. And uh, this schema uh, is an object that, uh, that has information about, about schema, uh, which describes the structure of table. And uh, there are rows, columns, and, and so on. And this module can also be used to process HTML tables and transform them to RDF. And it works the way that uh, it converts the HTML table to TSV and uh, then process it like usual TSV. Uh, okay, now comes the demo time. So uh, I will show you uh, first how uh, generation new module uh, works. So uh, we have this ar archetype module and uh, this script where we specify uh, some artifact ID and names. So uh, I will leave test own article and module name will be foobar. And I will just uh, run uh, this script to generate new module. Okay. And we can see that uh, here is new module. Which has uh, which has palm and it has some uh, some mo this this uh, expected module which is annotated abstract module yes and this is how the creating works it's it is kind of fast but now it is needed to uh, include it into spipes modules like I said uh, earlier. Matthew, can you please zoom it a little bit so it will be better visible? Oh. Yes, sorry, is it better? Yeah, thanks. Oh, okay, so okay, so uh, we we have this new uh, created foobar module, which extends annotated abstract module, and uh, it has some uh, some resources, like sorry, uh, and uh, it is type of uh, ontology uh, and some some uh, info about a new generated module. 
Okay, let's move on on the second demo. Uh, I I have some uh, pretty simple uh, input CSV, with, which contains some people uh, with uh, first names and last names, age and gender. And uh, the first thing I want to show you is how uh, how do we uh, convert it to tabular module. And uh, the output is uh, on the right here. And we can see that we, we have some triples and uh, some, some table which has rows, uh, multiple rows. And uh, if you go down, we can see that there is also table schema, uh, like I mentioned. So from this, we can reconstruct the, uh, the original CSV. And we can see that it has columns. Uh, for example, this blank node B1, uh, it represents the, the first column and it is it is first name. Uh, so we can see that, that it matches. Uh, and we, we can have a look at some row, uh, for example, this row. And we will look at a triple and it says the row three has uh, these values. It is Jane, Jane Doe, uh, 23 years old, and it is female. And this is how the table looks like. Uh, and now I will show uh, a pretty simple apply construct, which, uh, which gets the average age per last name. Uh, this is just a pretty simple construct where I create last name IRI and se select the average age. Uh, so we can see the, the output is uh, the last name and the average age. This is just pr pretty simple just to show uh, how it can how it can work. Uh, yeah, so so that's it from, from demo. Uh, thanks for the attention and for listening. And if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, thank you, Matej, very much for the presentation. So are there any questions from the audience? Um, maybe, can you, can you say something about this tabular model? What kind of parameters it has? Like what, what can you configure to, to run the model? Mm -hmm. like, okay. Uh, we can take a look. Um, okay, so these are the parameters we can specify. It is delimiter, and it means uh, how we uh, parse the data, how, how we uh, set the delimiter. Uh, so in the CSV, the delimiter is is uh, comma. Uh, we have a quote character, which is a double quote in CSV standard. And uh, also we have except invalid quoting. It is uh, for the case that, uh, uh, for example, there are only one of quote characters and not pair. Uh, we have da data prefix. Also, we want we can uh, skip the header if we don't want to include it, and uh, also we can process HTML files like I mentioned before. <coughs> okay, thanks. Okay. Uh, so uh, this is all generated by the script. All these constants. Uh, uh, yes, uh, you specify this uh, in the script, yes. Oh, okay, so you have to specify it in the script. Yes, you have to specify it. Oh. And is there, so I, I misunderstood maybe, that, so the script is not provided by, by the archetype. You have to write the script yourself or is there some, some sort of skeleton that you can use? Uh, you have to write the script uh, yourself. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm, I'm not 100% sure that we are clear here. 
Uh, just, just rather, I will say it uh, as well. So, okay. um, th this is a model that can be used in script. This tabular model, you can convert any any um, CSV into RDF, and those are the parameters of this model. So, within the script, you use this concrete model with some parameters. So for example, with delimiter, which is comma with quote character, which will be apostrophes or, and so on. And uh, Matej was also showing that you can generate a module, um, sorry, that you can uh, generate RDF uh, from uh, Java. So uh, if, uh, Mati, if you could show uh, one module and uh, how it looks like in RDF. Oh, okay. So, for example, apply construct. Um, apply construct, okay. And can you show the RDF definition of this? So here is, here is for example, iteration count parameter, parse text, parameter is replaced parameter and could you show it in rdf how it looks so every every such a model has also its counterpart in in rdf uh, but i didn't mean this is usage of this model but i thought uh, you would show the definition of the model and in the definition of the model uh you can see each parameter and documentation to it or some constraints how to use it yes and i just wanted to say that we can generate from annotations in java we can generate uh, those constraints as well so for example tabular model yes this this is tabular model and here is spin uh, used to define this module. Uh, so this is only thing that you can generate from uh, Java, but not, not script, but the definition of, of the model and uh, their constraints. This can be uh, generated from uh, annotations params, uh, which you can put on any field, and uh, that should do it. So. So that's all I wanted to say. I hope I clarified something, maybe not. <laughs> so that's it. Yeah, probably not because I meant the shell script. Uh, you meant the shell script I, I uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's the script I was, I was talking about. Oh, uh, this script uh, just generates a new template, but uh, for the module uh, in Java. Yeah, I get it. I get it. But so, so, but you have to write this script yourself. It's not provided uh, with the archetype. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You can call the uh, archetype itself itself with parameters. So this script is not doing much. It's just call. It just calls the the architect archetype with those parameters. And I believe this script is included in the repository. So. You could either edit it and run it, or you just call the archetypes itself. Okay, so any other questions? Also, so thank you very much for your presentation. I'm still very like to remain.